here. Welcome to another art journal tutorial. This one's called Take a Risk. And it is part of my color scheme challenge. The colors here are Deep Violet and Hooker Green. Now this was inspired by something that was a failed attempt. I printed on this tissue paper and as you can see it kind of jammed and creased and I just kind of left it on my table, but I love the colors. So those were the colors and the tissue paper that inspired this page. So I'm working in my, a page out of my DIY um, art journal, and I'll put a link to that video so you can see how I select something that I turn into an art journal. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just ripping this pay these tissue paper printed failed attempts. I'm gluing it down with fluid matte medium. This is Liquitex brand and I absolutely love using the fluid medium. I used gel medium for the longest time and maybe it's because I'm doing more collaging but I love using it and it dries so much faster than the gel medium, which is a bonus because I'm not very patient. So I'm just gluing these down. I'm trying to get the colors, the greens, the purples elsewhere. I absolutely love the colors of this. And like I say, that's what inspired this. And I thought, okay, let's see what I create. But when I started it, other than using something that would otherwise end up in the, in the trash, I, you know, didn't really have a plan. And because this is tissue paper, you can layer it upon layer and you get the texture from the tissue paper. If it's crinkled, that just adds to it. And when you put one thing on top of another, it just peeks through. And once this is dry, I grab this T TCW stencil and I'm pushing gesso through the stencil. Now, I wanted to add texture, which is why I did this. As it ended up, the amount of texture and even the pattern really doesn't show up. So this step, if you're trying to duplicate this, I would just skip this whole step or add it and see what happens for you. Maybe it'll work a little bit more. And I'm just rubbing gesso a little bit over to make to blend to fill in this blank areas so remember this the colors of this are more muted than my deep violet and my green so instead of mixing the green and the purple I know that's going to make an ugly color I'm going to show you and talk about how you can just add a little bit of black or white to your colors in the color scheme challenge and come up with another color or shade. So here are the two colors, the deep purple or deep violet and then the hooker's green. And off to the side, I'm just adding just a smidge of black to it and pressing it out. And then I'm just going to swatch that down to see that you get the same but different. It's more muted. Now, if I added more black, it would be a little darker. So you can get a lot of different variations with one color. And I put this part in to show you that. Because with all the color scheme challenges, you can use the th two or three or four colors and then add black and white. And you can just see, hopefully, how muted that becomes. So I just kind of added enough black in it, into both of those colors to match what I saw on the tissue paper. And that's another trick. When you start with something in a scrapbook paper or tissue paper, um, from anything, a magazine paper, you can try to match it by mixing your colors. 
And you just need to have a little bit of color theory. And by doing the color scheme challenge, by making this little book, and I'll put a link to where I show why we make this book. It's a reference guide, a color blending reference guide, if you will. And there I just mix the colors together and they do make a ugly looking brown, which I'm not going to make on purpose for this page anyways. But now that I have this reference tool, I can refer back to this and use it as a guide or give it to students in my art journaling and mixed media classes. So there I have the deep violet and the black and I am mixing it. And I just wanted to mix it with a little bit of water and colorize the rest of the page. And I wanted it to go into some of that texture to show off the texture that's there. And while I have the brush in my hand, you can see that, you know, I'm just happier when I use my fingers. And I get out my unbleached titanium, but you, it really, I'm thinking because I wanted it more muted. And then I thought, no, I'm just going to add a little more black, a little more black to it. That's when I got the idea to add the black, to mute out those colors. But that green and purple, as a color combination, I just love, love, love that. But you can you know, because when you mix them, you're going to get brown, you have to keep them apart. or dry them in between. So I'm not mixing them wet on wet. And that's, that's the key. It's just knowing when you can mix colors wet on wet and when you need to avoid that. And I really have no rhyme or reason. I'm trying to push it into the texture page. I'm just, you know, going and having fun with the colors. And sometimes when you just let go of all preconceived ideas of where you're going, you don't have a set plan, your mind is free to be creative. And you end up with some wonderful results. And that's why I art journal. Because when I'm doing that, I come up with a color scheme I love, or I come up with a co composition that I love that I can then use when I'm doing canvases or art to sell. But this is my time to just get creative and have fun. So now that all the colors are down, and you can still see some of the tissue paper patterns, I'm using this stencil from the Crafters Workshop. It's called Screen View, and it is one of my favorites. It is a good, solid, basic stencil. It is functional, you know, functional and usable on any themed page or canvas. And I'm just adding a little bit of white. In some areas, I'm getting a more opaque coverage, and other areas, a very shadowed look. and I'm applying it with a makeup sponge. And if you flipped over the makeup sponge, you would see that it is not gloopy or wet looking. Now at this stage, I'm just focusing on making a, an interesting looking background. I really have no idea where I'm going to take this or where it's going. This one was started with the colors and I just wanted to play with these colors. And I looked on the floor and I found this girl and I guess she fell on the floor when I was sorting out my stash. And I noticed that the color of her dress is that muted violet color. And she totally fits the scale of the page. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use her. I add a little more white for where she's standing so that she stands up a little bit more from the background, doesn't blend in too much. So I get the placement of her. 
and I used a stencil. It's an alphabet stencil, and I just sponge painted the sentiment, take risks, take the risk. And initially I did this on copy paper, which is what you're seeing me doing here. But on copy paper, that white is going to show up. And it doesn't look bad because I have the white blocks in the background. So the block lettering of this stencil also works really well with that. They match. You could type this out on your Word program and print it out on paper as well, different font and play with different fonts that you like. And I'm getting the positioning there, but there's a little more white than I would like. So then I stamp the same sentiment out on rice paper. Now I'm experimenting with rice paper. And as you can see, it goes fairly translucent. You can see some of the background in it. Once you use the matte fluid matte medium, you can still see, you can see that background. So it goes more translucent than copy paper. Copy paper will be stark white. This kind of fades into the background. Now, you still can see the outline of it, and I'm going to deal with that in a, in a bit. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. So I'm, I'm happy to share the trick with you if you don't want to see those harsh edges. I could have also more ripped around it instead of cut, and that would blend a little bit more and get rid of the, the harsh edges if that's something you're trying to avoid. So I'm thinking I'm pretty close to done here and I'm just taking a makeup sponge and some black paint and shading and edging the page. And I go sometimes two, three times around, adding little by little instead of all at once. You do not want it globby paint going on. And now I'm using the floating acrylic technique and I'm shading around the focal image. And I'm doing this so that the focal image will stand out from the background, I'm giving it shadows. And you can still see there's that image of the flower there, even though it's not an in-your-face flower. So I'll definitely do that with tissue papers, whether it's a failed attempt to print the tissue paper or whether it's a perfectly great tissue paper. You can always rip it up. You do not have to use an image whole. If you like the colors, use that. Now here I'm taking the green and the, the violet, the muted colors, and I'm putting it on a brush and I'm going over top of the rice paper. And it's soaking in and it's colorizing the rice paper, the same color as what's underneath it. So I'm just accentuating what's already there. And this is just pushing back the edge of the rice paper, any whiteness of the rice paper. And I'm just rubbing ever so lightly and it's not really blocking out the paint. And once I see that this is working, I'm applying it more liberally. If you like it more white, you can leave it at that. If you want it more colorized and hidden, you can do that. I could also have painted it first. Then I wanted it to stand out a little more. So I'm using this jelly roll and it's 
the 10 size. It's bold. And this is permanent when dry. Now, dry meaning, you know, curing overnight. But I wanted to add some white. There's the white from the stenciling that I did in the background. And with the block letters, it just all worked together in my mind. So I hope with your art journal, you take those risks, try something new. Yes, sometimes it's not going to work and it's not going to be a lovely, gorgeous page, but you're going to learn something. And one thing that you learn, you can take and apply to the next thing. You need to be actively involved in creating to get better at creating. And I decided I needed a little bit more splatter, so I splatter with white. And I just wipe it off the girl and anywhere where it globbed a little too much. So please, if you haven't joined the color scheme challenge, please do. You can check out my playlist, join my Facebook group, Mixed Media Creations, and share your work using the color schemes. There's at least one every month, sometimes two. Share this with your creative friends. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. What do you think of this color combination?